Good morning, Clinton College students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends. My name is Latasia White. I am a sophomore from Irvington, New Jersey, majoring in biology. Welcome to the second installment of the Spring 2022 Virtual Beacon Forum Series of Clinton College. The purpose of our Beacon Forum Series is to bring together our campus community each Wednesday from 11 o'clock a.m. to 12 noon for a dedicated time of inspiration, education, and fellowship. Beacon Forum exposes our Clinton family to a variety of thought leaders, change agents, creatives, and innovators who embody one or more of our core values, scholarship, servant leadership, social change, and spirituality. Beacon Forum gives us an opportunity to have a meaningful conversation with each other and professionals who are making a difference in our world. We encourage all Clinton College students to actively participate in the Q&A segment with our guest speaker, led by our president, Dr. Lester McCoy. Share your questions and reflections in the comments about today's event and especially during the Q&A. So this is what I want everyone to do. Let's practice typing groove by typing where you are from in the comments. So come on, y'all, don't be shy. Comment where y'all from, what you expect to hear from us today. You know, because everything will be good and we just want to know where you're from, where we where we're watching from. That's all we want to know. So let's start that. How's everyone doing today? You can leave a comment, you can leave a prayer, you can comment anything you would like in the comments, inspire people today. Mm -hmm. Love from Kentucky, okay. Yep, keep it going y'all, keep it going. Yep, that's what we like to see, interactive, people Communicating with each other, that's how we all communicate and that's how we all get everything good. From Charlotte, that's very nice. Okay, we are delighted to have as our featured speaker today, Mr. Michael N. Weaver, founder slash CEO of Dream Weaver Motivation, located in Madison, Wisconsin. On behalf of the entire Clinton College family, we say thank you to our friends from the community for spending part of your day with us. Be sure to follow our social media platforms for updates on future events, new academic programs, course offerings, and other activities. We hope you will enjoy today's broadcast. We will now have a performance of our National Negro Hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing, by Atlanta-based neo-soul artist, Choreology. God bless. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmony of liberty Let our rejoicing rise High as the listening sky Let it resound loud as the rolling sea Sing a song Full of the faith that the dark past the sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising, rising sun, sun of a new day beacon so let us march on till victory is won
watched how the chase Negro felt in the days when hope unborn and died. But yet with the steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which I fall aside? We have come over a way that with tears have been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughter. Good morning, everyone. My name is Hector Garcia. I'm a junior at Clinton College. I will um, lead us in a time of prayer. If you can, please bow your heads. Thank you, Lord, for this day. I pray for the Clinton College family and their loved ones. Please keep them safe. And I pray for you to give Mr. Weaver the wisdom to speak in what he says it's a blessing for us in our daily lives. Thank you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen.
Good morning, Clinton family. I'm excited to uh, to bring our speaker on for you this morning. <clears throat> I'm one of his former um, advisors in the HBCU world, and so he has been a student leader for me, um, and he's also one of my mentees. And so without further ado, <clears throat> born in the gateway city of St. Louis, Missouri, and raised in the jazz capital of the world of Kansas City, Missouri, Michael N. Weaver is an innovative, intriguing, and inspirational scholar. Weaver is the first in his family to graduate from an institution of higher education, Kentucky State University, where he earned his Bachelor's of Arts degree in music performance and will also be the first in his family to earn a graduate degree. Weaver achieved success at Kentucky's premier historically black university, where he maintained a commendable grade point average and took on the mantle of leadership. Michael found passion and success serving in the Student Government Association. His peers voted him to become the student government president and student regent and the 26th Mr. Kentucky State University. He was initiated in the fall of 2017 in the, in, into the preeminent fraternity of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. He has also found much success serving on the International Grand Board of Directors for the fraternity and receiving the highest undergraduate award for achievement. Michael N. Weaver Jr. didn't let being a first generation student keep him from chasing his dreams. Weaver gained national recognition as a White House HBCU competitiveness scholar and made an appearance on the Today Show for his commitment to service. Moreover, Weaver is the founder of Dream Weaver Motivation, where Dream, where Dream Weaver Motivation is his speaking, mentoring, and consulting company. He encourages, motivates, and inspires crowds of many to take hold of their dreams, lives, and future. He is best known for speaking on leadership topics, the collegiate experience as a first generation student, and how to make your dreams come true. Present day, Michael N. Weaver Jr. is a master's candidate in the Educational Leadership and Policy Analysis Program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison with a focus in student affairs. Here, he was selected to be the presidential fellow for the University of Wisconsin system, serving as an instructor for the Wisconsin School of Business while simultaneously fulfilling the role of program coordinator for the retention, advancement, and mentoring of young professionals program for the Urban League of Greater Madison. Weaver's ultimate goal is to serve the Academy of Higher Education and become a senior level leader. Weaver thanks God for all he's done and continues to do and sends love to his loved ones for their undenying support and, and encouragement in all his endeavors. Clinton family, please join me in welcoming Mr. Michael N. Weaver Jr. I was in the Navy. I worked for a doctor who loved to play golf hours, hours every day. And I would actually perform medical procedures when he'd leave me in the office. So I'm, I'm used to being in a position where, where I have to make decisions. And Mr. Twistle. Listen, this is, this is a very important... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This thing's impossible. I can do it. No, you can't. No one can. It's bull****. No, I'm pretty sure I can do it. No, you can't. Let me see it. Give it here. Oh, yeah. oh wow, you, you uh, really messed it up. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it, it looks like it... it uh, works around a, a swivel, so the centerpieces never move. So if, it, if it's yellow in the center, that's the yellow side. Right. If it's red in the center, that's the red side. Okay. So, uh, you, you can slow down. Oh, listen, we can drive around all day, because I, I don't believe you can do this. Uh, yeah, I can. No, no, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can. I'm telling you, no one can. Mm -hmm. See, that's all I ever do. <laughs> uh, have the sign. Holy cow. Oh, oh, you almost had that one. I'm gonna get it. Look at that.
Good morning, Clinton College family. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. Um, before going into my message for today, I would first like to say thank you to President Dr. Lester A. McCorn, Dr. McNeil for the invitation, Dr. Tobias Morgan, the Board of Trustees, and the Clinton College family for having me today. It is truly an honor and a privilege to serve as a guest speaker for the Beacon Forum series. As you all had an amazing speaker last week in Dr. Hodges, and so it is my prayer that God speaks through me to you on today. So just a few moments ago, uh, you all saw a clip from one of my favorite movies, The Pursuit of Happiness. In this clip, you see actor Will Smith, who is playing the role of Chris Gardner, attempting to talk to Mr. Twistle about his extensive and impressive resume. Yet, Mr. Twistle is distracted by the complexity of the Rubik's Cube, stating that it's impossible. Mr. Smith, realizing that Mr. Twistle is not interested in his story, suggests to Twistle that it is actually possible. Following, Twistle continuously tells Mr. Smith that it's impossible, that it can't be done, and that he can't do it. After a few minutes go by in the car, Twistle and the taxi driver are filled with the feeling of shock that Mr. Smith is actually solving the Rubik's Cube. And by the time they pull up to the house, the cube has been completely solved. After Smith what has been deemed impossible, all he gets is a good job, a goodbye, and a fee for a taxi to a place that he didn't even want to go. I would like to talk to you all on today on the subject uh, from impossible to I'm possible. Somebody listening on Facebook or YouTube, sitting at home at work in the car needs a reminder that the situation you are facing it's not impossible. Rather, it's I'm possible. Somebody gave 150% to that relationship, to that project, to that interview, and was only told good job or even goodbye. If I was down there in Rock Hill, South Carolina, I would say turn to your neighbor and tell them I'm possible. But instead, if you could, make sure I'm feeling like we are in person. Type in the chat, I'm possible. Text somebody and tell them to turn their impossible to I'm possible. Someone on the call was told early in their childhood that it was impossible to make it out of the circumstances from which they were given. Told that it would be impossible to attend college and graduate. Someone was laughed at and told that their dreams would never come true. But yet here you are, a living testimony, a survivor of pessimistic viewpoints from haters who couldn't even handle a day in your shoes. You ought to be happy, overjoyed, and filled with unmeasurable excitement that you are possible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I chose this clip because there are so many lessons within those 120 seconds. And I wish I had the time to go into detail. I don't want them to cut my mic off. Um, but I, I want to talk to you all a little bit about how you turn the impossible to I'm possible. Yeah, yeah. I only have about five minutes. So I'm, I'm gonna try to do uh, my, my due diligence and being on time. But in doing research about Clinton College, I saw that you all are the golden bears. Wow, that is powerful. And I thought to myself, what an opportunity to show the golden bears how, how being a golden bear shapes the impossible to I'm possible. So we're going to start off with the B. The B in bear stands for be bold. Type in the chat for the fourth to last time. Be bold. New Zealand-based actress Yana Cachola says be bold in pursuing what others believe is unrealistic because this will achieve more than being bland and unimaginative. Family, we must put a grain of boldness into everything that we do. Being bold doesn't mean uh, it doesn't have to be overly complex or scary, but being bold looks like showing up every day and putting your best foot forward. Being bold looks like not being afraid of failure so that you can have an opportunity to grow. Being bold means not giving up just because everyone else did. You must know that I, I, I grew up in the Baptist church. And whenever life presents its challenges, I've grown accustomed 
to pairing it with a conquering scripture. I'm reminded of Joshua 1 and 9 that says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. When peers ask me how I how I get so many opportunities, how how do they get to where I am? My first answer is always it's God. My second answer is I showed up. And my third answer is I'm always willing to be bold enough to bet on myself and achieve in everything that I do. And you have to do the same. Be bold in your scholarship. Be bold in your service. Be bold in your faith and be bold in your leadership. If you're going to turn your impossible to I'm possible, you first have to be bold. So, yes, we have the B. The B is for be bold. All right. I hope you all got it. Now we're moving on to the E is engage. Stay engaged. For the third to last time, type in the chat, be engaged. Yes. While I hope that you find your significant other, I'm not talking about that type of engagement. No, I'm, I'm talking about being involved and active on your campus and in your community. People will often speak on how they want to make a difference, all the dreams they have for themselves, but they never take the action to engage with reality. It is important to engage with your thoughts, with your dreams, with your aspirations, but it's equally important to engage with the actions that make those things come to fruition. When speaking on engagement that does not solely rely upon the student, I know that my, my goal was to speak to, to the student body, but I also wanna to speak to the Clinton College family because we all have to be engaged. See, it's, it's everyone's responsibility. Faculty, staff, alumni, administration, community, and students. Nothing bothers me more than when people complain about a campus that they aren't actively involved or engaged in. How can you complain about student life when you've never left your room to attend an event? How can you complain about students not doing well in class, but you've never engaged them to, uh, uh, to better understand how they need to be taught? How can you as alumni complain and moan about what the school isn't doing, but you haven't given a dime back to support it after it supported you in your seven years of attendance? Oh, I'm, I'm stepping on somebody's toes this morning. I'm sorry. There is so much possibility and opportunity that lays at your feet at Clinton College, but you, you watching this must, must make the decision, make a choice to be involved and be engaged no matter what your role is. That's the E. So we have be bold. We have be engaged, and now we have A, accountability. Uh, this word makes some people itch because they are allergic to it. I could do a speech on accountability all by itself, but I, I only have a few moments left. Um, I'm trying to get through this. Dr. McNeil, don't cut my mic. Please, DK, don't cut my mic. But uh, if you could, type in the chat for the second to last time today, accountability. See, pe people naturally run away from accountability or criticism because it's not something that people like to hear. If you are always running to praise from others or people who always tell you good job but never tell you what you can do better, then you are actively deciding to be around people who only enable you to be mediocre. Oh, shoot. I didn't step on somebody's toes. I'm sorry, Dr. McCorn. Y'all, they going to write a, a message to you saying that they, don't, that, that, that they can't invite me back. But too much praise or too much criticism is never good. But a healthy balance of both is what is needed to turn your impossible to I'm possible. Knowing when you need a pick me up and knowing when you need to be corrected is a proven formula for success. The haters and the enemies in your life aren't the ones who tell you what you need to hear. They aren't the ones who tell you when you're wrong. The haters are the ones who always tell you what you want to hear, knowing that you have the capacity and the capability to do better. I'm reminded of when I served as student government president and I started to have more speaking engagements and people constantly told me how good I was or, or that I was doing a good job, that they've never seen an SGA president like Michael N. Weaver Jr. Ah, man, it felt good. And I was on cloud nine. But after every engagement, a phenomenal lady, scholar, and speaker by the name of Dr. Crystal DeGregory will always criticize what everyone else thought was good. I really looked up to her and, and still do uh, look up to Dr. DeGregory. And it hurt me to my core that one time I cried because I thought I gave an amazing speech. Right. I, I had used some Whitney Houston lyrics in the speech, some uh, some little Duval lyrics in the speech in the intro. And she told me what no one else had the courage to tell me, which was that it wasn't good and that I 
could do better. See, what I thought was my best was really mediocre. She saw more in me that I couldn't yet see, but her criticism and her holding me accountable allowed me to move past my initial emotion of hurt and move to work. I would not be here speaking before you today had she not told me I could do better. I would not have Dreamweaver motivation had someone not held me accountable to a higher standard. There is purpose in pain which lies in truth. If you are willing to go from impossible to infinite possibilities, you must allow yourself to be held accountable for the sake of your own growth. Oh, I know. I didn't, uh, somebody's feeling convicted this morning. So we have be bold. We have be engaged. We have accountability. And finally, the R in bear stands for stay ready. For the final time today, type in the chat, stay ready. There is nothing more expensive than a missed opportunity. If I could recall your mind back to the clip, one important takeaway is that because Will Smith stayed ready, he didn't have to get ready. Because he was versatile, he was able to adapt. Because he showed up, he was able to show out. That one opportunity that you've been hoping for, that you've been praying for, could pass you by simply because you weren't bold, simply because you didn't engage, simply because you resisted accountability. And now in the blink of an eye, the opportunity you once hoped for slipped right through your fingertips. King Richard has, al has also joined my list of favorite movies. And repeatedly throughout the movie, he reminded his girls, Venus and Serena, that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. The question is, ladies and gentlemen, what are you doing today that's preparing you for tomorrow? When will you stop saying one day and instead make today day one? Have you visited career services, career services to have your resume and cover letter ready to go? Have you maintained a commendable grade point average so that you can join that fraternity or sorority? As long as it's not Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I'm just playing. When is the last time that you read a book that contributed to your personal or professional growth? Ask yourself, are you really ready for the blessing you keep asking God for? God doesn't prepare you. God doesn't prepare the blessing for you. He prepares you for the blessing. But you must be willing to put in the work. So we have B, be bold. We have E, stay engaged. We have A, accountability. And we have R, stay ready. And as I, I, as I leave you with my final remarks, I'm reminded of a story about a boy and his father who went to the toy store. Some of y'all don't know about that because y'all just got Amazon. But, but back in my day, y'all think I'm young, but we used to go to Toys R Us. And the father told the son that he could have any toy he wanted and would let the boy roam the store until he found the toy that he wanted. As a few minutes went by, the father started to hear this thud sound over and over. Doom, doom, doom. And he finally found the boy hitting what is called a weeble wobble, a blow up toy that, that falls over when you hit it and bounces back up. The boy would hit the man and knock it over and be amazed that it stood back up Every time, no matter how hard he punched it, no matter how hard he kicked it, that this little weeble wobble, this man painted on this blow up, uh, uh, this blow up rubber thing would bounce back up every time. The dad asked the son, why do you think he comes back up when you hit him and knock him down? Why do you think he comes back up when you hit him and knock him down? The boy pondered for a moment and said, I don't know. I guess it's because he's standing up on the inside. Hmm. Yeah, I probably missed that one. When Dr. McNeil first invited me, he asked me for a short and a brief bio. And I was in the process of cutting it down, but then realized that I couldn't. See, everything you heard in the bio and see today, that's my New Testament. But if you don't know my Old Testament, if you don't know my story, then you can't understand my glory. If only you knew how many times I was knocked down on the outside but had to keep getting back up on the inside. If only you knew how many times people said I wouldn't make it, that I would never amount to anything. When the research said, 
because I grew up in a single parent household. I wouldn't make it to my high school graduation without being locked up or killed. I did. When my high school principal said I wouldn't thrive at an HBCU, I did it. When friends turned their back and laughed at my dreams, I did it. So Dr. McNeil, I am sorry that I didn't give you <clears throat> a short and bio. I just couldn't hide the fact that behind every single accomplishment was a decision I made to stand up on the inside and turn the impossible to impossible. See, we're not that different, y'all. Yeah, I know some people have told you that you wouldn't make it, that you wouldn't be here today. And, and my story is still being written every day that God gives me an opportunity to breathe. Some of the very people that you look up to, they stood up on the inside. Those two little black girls from Compton named Venus and Serena turned impossible to impossible. The little black boy from Akron, Ohio named LeBron James turned impossible to impossible. The little black girl from the streets of Chicago and the little black boy from Honolulu, Hawaii, who became the first black president and the coldest first lady in American history turned impossible to impossible. The black girl who graduated from an HBCU and became the first black female vice president turned impossible to impossible. And finally, I, I said I wasn't going to preach. I said I wasn't going to go there, but I'm reminded of a man who they hung high and they stretched wide. A man who they perceived to be dead, but three days later, he rose again and he turned the impossible to impossible because he is possible. You are possible when things go wrong as they sometimes will. And the road you're trudging seems all uphill. When the funds are low and the debts are high. When you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. And as I leave you today, remember to be the golden B-E-A-R. Be bold, be engaged, be held accountable and stay ready. Be bold because you will have Mr. Twistles in your life who say it can be done just because they can't. Don't allow someone else's limitations to keep you from your elevation. Just because almost is good enough for them doesn't mean it's good enough for you. So the next time somebody says it's impossible, ask them how much they want to bet. Because they win, when they bet against you, they bet it against God. And the God I serve is going to win every single time. So take out a pen and paper. Take out a notebook and write your haters a thank you note for telling them, for telling you that it's impossible. Because it's, uh, it's a reminder that every time you say it's impossible for me, it's a reminder that I am possible. Thank you. <laughs> All right, preacher. I, I'm going to open the doors of the church now for those who would like to join. <laughs> and after I do that, I'm going to pass the collection plate. Uh, Mr. Weaver, you tremendously blessed us today. Thank you for that powerful message. I almost said sermon because that's what it was. And you certainly closed like a good Baptist preacher. <laughs> and uh, if you don't have license, talk to me after the Beacon Forum and we'll get you a license, brother. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. That was a uh, that was a great, great message. So appropriate. And thank you for intertwining your own story with a word of encouragement to our students and everybody who watched this, I'm sure, was inspired by uh, by the message. For those of you who are watching, if you're still with us and you want to engage some more, please type your questions in the chat. Uh, we're going to have some time with Mr. Weaver, and uh, I want to make sure that we hear your voices and give him a chance to respond uh, to your responses to his message. Uh, I'll begin by asking you a couple of questions. Um, you talked about, and I love the acronym you used. Uh, thank you for, for putting the bear uh, in another perspective. We often talk about the bear as well on campus, but uh, thank you for talking about being bold and being engaged and being accountable and staying ready, right? If you if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Yes, uh, so th thank you for that. You, you mentioned in one of the points, you talked about betting on yourself. And I, I want you to talk a little bit more about that for the sake of uh, our students. What does it mean to bet on yourself? Yes, sir. Um... You can't. So I, I, I've seen people who who have the potential, who have um, all, all it takes to be successful, um, but they never 
could get to the point they could never feel, fulfill that potential because they were never willing to bet on themselves. So betting on yourself means that you are confident in who you are, no matter what flaws you have, no matter uh, how much you weigh, no matter any of that, you have to be willing to say that I'm good enough. Regardless of if the world believes it or not, you have to say and believe that I'm good enough. You have to have the faith. And I, I think that to my point um, earlier, when I was talking about uh, when people ask me how I get to where I am or how do I bet on myself? The first thing is God. Um, and because I believe in him, I'm able to believe in me. And so um, I, I think that um, when you start to bet on yourself, when you start to believe that you actually can, that's when things start to change. And that's what it means by betting on yourself. And so um, I think the first step to betting on yourself is understanding and knowing your strengths. You know, take some assessments, the Clifton Strengths Finders, the, mm -hmm. um, the Myers-Briggs, you know, figure out those things and say, OK, like this is where I am. These are my strengths. This is what I can do. This is what I'm, I am capable of. Um, and then start believing that. Right. So start putting that into action. And when you believe it, other people start to believe it as well. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. That's great advice for uh, for our students and for everyone watching. Um, talk a little bit about Dreamweaver. Um, what 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 inspired you? What motivated you? And what what do you see as your purpose with Dreamweaver? Uh, Dreamweaver um, is interesting. I the first time I was invited to speak and for a paid engagement. Uh, was with the group of teachers uh, and they wanted me to speak on diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, and that was the first time I had got paid to speak. And I was like, oh, like I could maybe I could do this. And I and I like speaking. I like talking. I like giving my perspective. Um, and so I was like, well, maybe I could maybe I could do this. And so there was uh, we had a, a, um, a man on campus who used to always call me Dream Weaver. And so I was like, I could go somewhere with that. And so I was like, I was like dream weaver motivation. And so my purpose with this is really just to inspire, you know, um, anyone who comes across my content, who comes across a speech that I'm giving um, and that my message is suited for not just one crowd of people, but it can be applied to, you know, whether you are 80 years old or whether you are uh, in middle school. It's a it's a my mo my, my motivation and my goal is just to inspire people um, at all stages of their life that whatever it is that they dream, whatever it is that they want in life, they can do it as long as they put in the work, take the proper steps and have faith in God. Yeah, good. What did it mean to you to have someone speak those words, dream weaver to you? What 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 happened to you when you heard that? Um. You know, the only thing I knew about Dreamweaver before I before I did that, before it became Dreamweaver Motivation, was the computer software. And so I was like, why are you calling me Dreamweaver? Um, but then I, when I started to think about it more, um, I started to think about how I could calculate a message, how I, how I could compute a message to provide inspiration. Then I started to think about uh, the dream catchers. And I was like, oh, like, mm -hmm. how, how do you, right? And so like all these things started clicking in my head about, um, possibilities with Dreamweaver. And so um, it, it got to the point to where now people don't even call me Michael. People say Dreamweaver. What's up, Dreamweaver? Uh, and I love it because I think it's a reminder when people see me that their dreams are possible. And, and I think that's, mm -hmm. that's always been my ultimate goal. Awesome. Awesome. Good. I know we've got some questions coming in. Uh, DK, do we have a question in the chat for Mr. Weaver? Okay, Dr. Morgan says, as an undergraduate student, when do you begin to believe that you had the potential to become a student leader in SGA and a royal court? Mm. Uh, when, I, when my parents took me to a uh, new student orientation, uh, I saw uh, the Mr. and Miss Kentucky State University at the time and the SGA president, Antoine Derisaw. It was Diamond Gordon and um, Stephanie Durr. And I said, and I was sitting there and I was thinking to myself, one day that's going to be me standing up and talking to everybody um, about orientation, talking about what it means to be a thoroughbred. Um, and as I continued to be involved on campus, uh, my involvement first started uh, joining the choir. Um, I was in the choir faithfully um, and, and it started there. And so the more I started to branch out and join different organizations and see what it is that I liked, what I didn't like, um, that's when I was like, OK, I can do this. When people started to see um, the leader in me before I saw it in myself um, was, was when it really was when it really took off. And uh, we had someone by the name of Coach Graham who said uh, he said, you're going to be SGA president. 
he said you need to run because the campus needs it. And you know, I didn't see it. I was like, I'm just focused on Mister. I just want to be the king. You know, I want to smile and wave, go talk to the alumni, do some community service projects. Um, I didn't really see myself as the policy guy or the regent guy. Um, and once he said that to me, um, it started to click. And so sometimes we need other people, um, positive people in our lives to show us and direct us um, to the path that w- which we should take. Great. For our students who are watching, uh, would you say a little bit more about your experience in student government? How did that um, how did that enhance your total college experience? Oh, man, I would I wouldn't change it for the world. And every time, you know, a student talks to me about what can they do, I'm like, get involved with student government. You know, uh, you need to make sure that you are running for something. You ain't got to be the president. If you want to be a senator, every position matters because you get to influence what your campus looks like. You get to influence the experience that everybody else has. Right. And so I think um, being a student government not only opens doors on campus, but open doors off campus. And so when you're able to put it on your resume that you served as the treasurer, that you served as the secretary, all those things matter when you start to think about post-graduation, when you start to think about graduate school, when you start to think about jobs. You know, these experiences are really full-time jobs. When I was SGA president, when I was mister, I felt like I had a full-time job on top of being a student, uh, if you're doing the job right. Um, and so uh, I think that it's it's a it's an amazing opportunity for people to get a taste of what happens in the real world. If you are a business major or an accounting major, you need to be running for treasurer. If you are an English major, if you are uh, interested in, you know, doing um, legal stuff, run for chief justice, you know, run run to be the student conduct officer. These are experiences right at your fingertips that you're getting an opportunity to, to see and say, oh, I can do this in the future when I leave. And so because I served as SGA president, and was able to be right there along my along my president and be um you know right there along with the student regents. Now I'm I'm aiming uh to be a university president and a college president. And so um that's you know these experiences just show you um and give you a different um look and different perspective on life. Oh that's wonderful. Man, I encourage you uh, shoot for the moon Thank man you. keep rising yes, uh, yes, you'll, you'll get there you got all the tools uh, you have the intellect and the uh, inspiration to do it. So uh, I certainly you. want to encourage you to go further. Are there any other questions in the chat, DK? All right, I want to make sure we give our students a chance to chime in here. I don't know if Latasia and Hector have any questions or reflections on the message today. You certainly have spoken in such a relevant way uh, for our students. It's always good for them to hear from um, from folks who have been where they are. Um, yes, it seems like it wasn't that long ago, so it's fresh on your mind, <laughs> uh, your experience at Kentucky State. I've been to that great campus. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. M. Christopher Brown was my good friend, former president. Yes. I, I've been there. That's a, a great, great school and glad to, to know that you're carrying on the tradition. Uh, here's a question. As a proud HBCU graduate, can you speak to your transition into graduate school at University of Wisconsin-Madison? Um, it was an interesting transition. So the the I, I came to Madison during the pandemic, at the height of the pandemic. And so my first time visiting the campus, my first time visiting the city was when I actually moved up here. So I had no idea what the city looked like. I had, you know, just bet- between videos and pictures, um, and it's funny, I'm going to go back to my transition from high school to being at HBCU. Mm. I went to predominantly white high school um, and then went to HBCU. When I got to my HBCU, I was like, oh, my gosh, there's so many black people. There's black people everywhere. There's black women everywhere. I, you know, I was, I was just excited. Um, <laughs> and so uh, I, I got used to that. I got accustomed to that. And I came to Madison and I was like, oh, my God, where are black people at? Um, and so that was a transition within itself, right? Uh, from being one of many black people in the classroom to now being usually the only one, uh, the usually only person of color in the classroom. And so figuring out how do I make that transition, but it wasn't a hard transition because being at an HBCU prepares you to be in those spaces. And so a lot of times people think that because you're in an all black space, you're not prepared to go into the real world, but you are because you're facing different things. You're building that confidence in yourself and your skin color. Um, and I think that, you know, it really has really helped me and allowed me to be successful here at uh, University of Wisconsin-Madison. And so I'm uh, I'm in my last semester. I'm carrying out the 4.0. Uh, 
Um, and so I am super excited. Um, and so, you know, the things that I was taught during my HBCU experience during my time as SGA president have been influential, I mean, beneficial in my success in the graduate program here. Awesome. Awesome. One more question. Uh, can you revisit your point on versatility and its importance? Absolutely. Um, mm, how do I want to? I think it's important to be versatile. Uh, and when I say versatile, being able to do more than one thing. And I think that it's important to be an expert in something. Um, but I think it's also important to be good at different things. Because if you can be good at different things, you never know when people are going to plug you into an opportunity somewhere. You may be one in one thing, but that, that that only limits you to that one thing. But if you can do multiple things good, then it opens some more doors for you. Um, and then once it, once that door opens, then you work on becoming an expert in that field or in that area. Um, but if you are able, um, you know, um, so for instance, I, I love higher ed, right? And so I love um, I love student affairs, but I can also do student success. I can do first and second year programming, but I also love development. I can go out and fundraise and bring you in a million dollars. And so thinking about how do I be versatile in order to make my to give myself the best possibility of getting an opportunity and being successful. That's right. That's great. Great advice. Yeah. If you're if you're versatile, you become valuable. Absolutely. And um, everyone in leadership needs people who are versatile who will add value to the team. That, that is wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, the way you laid out this message for us and how you included your own personal experience in here. I think that's most beneficial. And thank you for the clip. Uh, that was ingenious to show that clip at the beginning of Will Smith. Uh, yeah, great, great message. I think we all got that message because we've all had uh, a Mr. Twizzle tell us we can't do it just because Absolutely. they can't do it. And, um, and N Nelson Mandela has a has a great quote that says it's it's only impossible because you haven't done it before. Uh, so thank thank you. And uh, you see Jamel Hodges, Dr. Hodges. Yes, yes. I know he's a proud huge, of you. huge inspiration, huge inspiration yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, great. We can tell. We can tell. Well, thanks again. And as I say to every uh, speaker, you're now a part of the Golden Bear family. Thank so you. you have a standing invitation to come back. And hopefully when things get better, we can bring you back in person uh, to visit right. our campus. Congratulations on your academic success. And uh, we're pulling for your graduation and uh, we'll be following your career. Uh, thank you so forward. much. Yes, sir. Thank you to our Clinton family. Thank you all so much for joining us again. We are blessed by your presence every week when you join us in our Beacon Forum. Uh, we get a chance to share a little slice of heaven of this college in Rock Hill, South Carolina, with everyone in the world who watches us. Uh, make sure that you share this with others. Uh, it'll be on our website. It'll be on Facebook and uh, YouTube to view later. So please share with your friends and associates and continue to pray for us as we seek to do God's will and to advance the mission here at Clinton College. After we sing the alma mater, we will have uh, closing announcements by uh, Dean Morgan. Thank you.
morning. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Michael Weaver. That was such a powerful message. And so just um, as we wrap up, I just want to give to all of our, our Golden Bear students just some upcoming events that are coming up here at Clinton. As you guys know, our new student organization cycle is now open. If you want to start a new student organization on campus, whether it's academic or social, whether you're a residential, commuter, or global student, please submit a packet to start a new student organization. Applications are live and will close on March 15th. You can find an application on our Instagram page. If you click in the link in the bio, the applications will be available to you. We will be having our Mr. and Miss Clinton in the Royal Court Informational on January 27th, Friday, January 27th, this week to be the first Mr. and Ms. Clinton and serve on the Royal Court. This is an exciting time here at Clinton College, so please get involved and get engaged, as you just heard. We also have our SGA informational on January 31st and February 1st. So you have two opportunities to attend the SGA informational. Attendance is required to submit a petition to run for any elected SGA um, position. We will be having a night courtyard live on Instagram on February 2nd. Um, with uh, which will be live on our Instagram page. The Instagram um, page is in my title on the screen. So please follow us. Additionally, we have our Campus Activities Board information on February 7th. The Campus Activities Board is all things activities sponsored and hosted by our students. So all things that our students will develop and create and, um, and put out to our students on campus and to our global students as well. And then we'll be having a late night breakfast on February 11th in our cafeteria for all of our residential students uh, on campus. And um, that's really that's it coming up for us in our um, campus events. And we have some more things coming out in March um, for you guys. Though, so stay tuned. Thank you, Dr. Morgan. I want to uh, invite and remind everybody about our upcoming uh, virtual chapel worship experience that will be happening this coming Sunday, Sunday, January 30th at five o'clock right here on the Clinton College Facebook page and the Clinton College YouTube channel. Uh, we've received a grant, a generous grant from the Calvin Institute for Christian Worship. And this, um, this uh, week we will have with us the Reverend Dr. Carla Jean McNeil Jackson. Uh, she's an, uh, a fantastic vocalist, an attorney and a public theologian. So she will be leading our um, clergy conversation during our worship service. And we are also excited to have students from the Virginia Union University Chapel that will be joining us for this worship experience as well. Part of our, uh, our grant um, is centered around our, our ch chapel program uh, collaborating with other HBCU chapel programs around the country. And this week, it will be with Virginia Union. So we invite all of our Clinton students to join with the Virginia Union students right here on Facebook and YouTube for an inter interactive and collaborative worship opportunity. Thank you everybody for joining and we hope to see you right back here on Sunday for Chapel and next Wednesday for Beacon Forum. Our speaker next Wednesday will be Mr. Travis P. Jackson from the HBCU Pride Nation. We're excited about having Mr. Jackson as our speaker for Beacon Forum next week and hope that you will join us, 11 o'clock. Thank you for being here and we'll see you Sunday and next Wednesday.